Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where I'll be making mug rug weaving tutorials and more. I want to give a heartfelt thanks to all of my new subscribers who have come on board over the last few months. It's been a bit quiet on my end as I navigate the technical end of things and the video quality is still a work in progress. But with the start of the new year, it's well past time to jump in and get this channel going. There's a link in the description to warping instructions for the mug rug pattern in this video. All of my mug rug patterns in the foreseeable future can be woven on the same warp. And with that, let's get started. What I have on top of my loom here are two samples. This one is what we're going to be doing today. This is a 2-2 twill bound weave. 2-2 two, two means that two shafts are up and two shafts are down with every pick of weft thread. Um, and this is also a 2-2 two, two twill pattern. Uh, they're very similar, but the treadling and order of colors is different between these two. But the reason I have both of these here to show you is they have very different drape. Um, this one is very supple, very drapey. Uh, it won't stay stiff as a board, it flops around, but you can see that uh, still the weft threads here still completely cover all the warp threads. So it's not super loose, it's still bound weave, um, but I've used a very light beat. I used the beater bar, but just gently eased each thread into place. Whereas on this one, I used the beater bar to really pound it in. So all of the weft threads are packed more densely together, which means this one doesn't have really any drape to speak of. It is stiff, kind of like a board, and I can even knock on it. Um, and I have complete control over that, and you would too, just by how hard you pack in those threads or how gently you ease them in one at a time. So this one here is what we'll be doing. These waves here are actually each made up of four separate picks of weft. So this, what looks like a continuous dark blue line here, is four separate threads that are separated by the other colors. They've just been jam-packed together to make it look like the illusion of a continuous line. So how do I achieve that? Well, using my loom here, I have... Uh, four treadles that I'm going to be using. I've got four shafts on this loom. Treadle one is connected to shafts three and four. This is a rising shed loom, which means when I press that treadle, shafts three and four lift up and shafts one and two stay down. And this is the pattern that that gives me. When I press treadle two, shafts one and four lift up two and three stay down. When I press treadle three, one and two lift up, three and four stay down. And when I press treadle four, one and four stay down while two and three lift up. So these are the four different openings between the threads, the four different sheds that I will combine to give, my, to give me my pattern. So you can see with these slats of cardboard here, which threads are underneath the warp and which threads float over top of the warp. I will just be continuing this pattern, treadles one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, the whole time with no deviations whatsoever. So I'll always be going in that same order. And I've got three different colors here and they will all be going in the same order as well. So I've got a dark, a medium, and a light color. And I will simply be using these in that same order the whole time. Dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, with no deviations. So how does a pattern come out of not changing what you're doing the whole time? Well, that comes because we have four different sheds, but three different colors. So as I use these colors, I'll use dark, medium, light on one, two, three, but then when I get to my fourth treadle, that fourth shed, I will be back to my dark color again. And that puts everything on a different shed every time I rotate around. So between three colors and four sheds, it will actually take me 12 picks of weaving, 12 times of throwing the shuttle through to the other side in order to get one complete rotation of the pattern. 
where every color shows up on every one of these different sheds. Let's see what that actually looks like in practice. So I'm starting with my dark color on shed number one. That means I'm lifting shafts three and four, leaving one and two down. To start off my thread here, I'm going to just wrap that end around and tuck it back in. I'm not going to be cutting off and adding new colors very regularly at all in this work, so I don't really feel the need to taper that thread. There won't be any buildup because I'm going to be using the same shuttles the whole time without cutting them. Next up comes my medium color on shed number two. That is lifting one and four, leaving two and three down. So again, I'm going to tuck that thread back in behind. I'm going to leave an angle here so that it has enough slack in there to be going over and under all the threads it needs to to go across. And now I'm going to add my light color on treadle three, shed three, which lifts one and two and leaves three and four down. You'll notice that I sent all three of my colors in the same direction. It's much easier to keep track of where your shuttles are if you do that. All right, I am off to a good start. I've used all three of my colors with the first three treadles, but I have one more treadle to go to use all four, and that means I'm back to my dark color again. Think of the dark color as the lead color. It goes through first, and then the medium and light go through following it in the same direction. Okay, I have now used all four of my treadles, so I'm back to treadle one, and now this time I'm on the medium color. Now on shaft, or uh, shed two with my light color. And on shed three, I'm back to the dark again to start us going from right to left. Back to treadle four with medium. And now back to treadle one with light. Two with dark. Three with medium. And four with light. Now at this point, I have used all three of my colors four times each and I've used all four of my treadles three times each, which means that uh, both my treadle order and my color order are back to where we started again. So I'm ready to start again with treadle one and my first lead color, which is my dark color. So this is one pattern repeat, 12 picks, that has given me this subtle zigzag pattern, just one shot of weft at a time. I'm going to continue doing that until I reach the length of a mug rug. So I'm just going to repeat that over and over and over again. And you'll see how the pattern shows up as we go through that same treadling order with the same color order the whole time through. All right, so one more time. Dark on one. Medium on two. Light on three. And dark on four. This time starting on one with medium. Light on two. Dark on three. 
medium on four. Now light on one. Dark on two. Medium on three. And light on four. We've just completed our second pattern repeat and you can start to see it coming through even better. Now, as you're weaving, uh, keeping the shuttles in the same order is very important to getting neat edges. So the way I'm achieving that is I send my lead color through first and I stack it right here at the front of the line, I think of it. Then when I send the next color through after it, it goes to the back of the line. Then when I send my third color through, it too goes to the back of the line. Then I'm gonna start in the other direction. And now this starts the line again. And again, medium following it will go behind my blue color. And then light after that will also go behind to the end of the line. So whether you're stacking right up here on your warp, like I tend to do, or stacking them next to you on a weaving shuttle, or sorry, a weaving bench, the shuttle should do the same thing. Uh, you start the line with your lead color, then your next one goes behind it, and the last color goes to the end of the line. And if you do that, you should maintain the same colors stacked up in a consistent order along the edge, which gives you those nice tidy edges. It's not always possible to get super neat edges in bound weave, especially if you're changing direction, a little bit of messiness will happen, but this is the best way to keep it as tidy as possible by making sure that you're using a consistent stacking order as you place those shuttles down when they go through the shed. Another thing that I haven't mentioned is what to do with those floating salvages. So I have recommended to use floating salvages in my warping directions. And if you're unfamiliar with that, that means I have two extra threads at the edges of my work, which are weighted separately from the rest of the warp threads. So these, I can't really pull out of place, but these two at the edges, I can pull around as much as I want because they are not tensioned onto the back beam. They're simply weighted, actually with water bottles is what I use for my weights. I like water bottles because you can put as much or as little water in there as you want, which means you can adjust the weight of that and make it match the tension of the other threads. So that's all that's holding them back there, which means also that they are not threaded through a heddle like all of the other warp threads are. They don't go up and down. I can press any different treadles I want and they don't move at all with the rest of the threads, which means that I have to manipulate them by hand when I send the shuttle through. So let's see where I am in my pattern. Okay. This is the thread that I just sent through. When you get lost, if you put all your shuttles down and you don't remember where you stopped, you can find what you just did last by finding which opening, which shed matches the thread. So this one here, this one doesn't match. My thread is still packed in there. If I press this treadle, I can't get it out. Same, oh, here we go. So 
treadle number two is just what I pressed, and I can tell that because this thread is nice and loose in there. Okay. So now I'm on to three with my medium following my dark. And now I'm gonna show you what to do with these floating selvages, and it's really very simple. All you do is go over on the side when you're entering the shed, and go under on the side where you exit the shed. And that's all you need to know. Every single time, you're always going to go over and under. Go in over, come out under. And same from the other side. So when you're going to, from left to right or from right to left, you always start over and come out under. Since you do that from both sides, you'll be going over the thread on one side and under on the other, and then the opposite. So you do trap those threads in at the selvages. Okay. Now we're just going to continue in the same pattern until you have a complete mug rug. And that's all there is to this pattern. So once you repeat that pattern enough times, you will end up with a mug rug that looks a bit like this one. So I only have enough warp on this loom to weave one more mug rug after this one. And when that happens, you can be on the lookout for a video on how to finish the edges and get a fringe. Uh, with a good finish like this. So let me know in the comments if you plan to try out this pattern or if you have any questions about what you've seen. Check out the links in the description. Thank you again to my subscribers and I'll see you all in the next video.